Dawn, can I just make sure you're still with us? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the board meeting for Monday, February 9th. Uh, I'd like to just ask if you could please stand for the singing of our national anthem. Thank you very much, and welcome to uh, welcome trustees, our director, executive council, members of uh, the community, local media. Um, at this point, uh, we do have all the trustees around the table. We do have Trustee Danko um, joining us by phone. Uh, Don, can you hear us? Loud and clear. Ooh, and you're very loud and clear. Good. Um, so. Um, Don can hear the feed coming through our microphones, so I just ask that all trustees, as usual, use your microphones and speak clearly into them. Um, and yeah, once again, Don, we can hear you loud and clear. So, uh, welcome to everyone. At this point, I'm looking for an approval of the agenda. We should all have the package in front of us. Are there any uh, additions, amendments, or someone like to move the agenda? Moved by Trustee Hicks, thank you. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Van Geffen, thank you very much. All those in favor? Anyone? Aye. Thank you. That is unanimous. Next, do we have any declarations of conflict of interest on any of the items on today's agenda? Seeing none, thank you. We'll move to item number five, confirmation of the minutes. So we'll look to the January 19th minutes in our package. I'm looking for a mover. Can I make one correction? Yes. Yes, you may. Trustee Danko. Item 13, it just says that the vote was carried. There were seven in favor and three opposed. That should be nine in favor and one opposed. Thank you very much. That's noted. Okay. So actually, I'm not looking for a motion. I'm just looking for confirmation. Uh, so we've made that change. Is there anything else in terms of the minutes that uh, trustees would like to note? See none, thank you. We'll look at our January 26th minutes. Are there any uh, notes that trustees would like to make on these, this document? See none, thank you very much. Those will go into the record. We'll move right to item number six, which is our French Immersion <coughs> Advisory Committee meeting from January 21st. And uh, our two members of the committee are myself as well as uh, Trustee Deeth. So, uh, Trustee Dee, I ask that you bring the report. Thanks, Todd. Oh, thanks, Trustee White. <laughs> um, so, in our first meeting, we uh, we talked about a couple of issues. The monitoring items are uh, transportation for extracurricular activities, <clears throat> and that was uh, in particular to Guy Brown students who are attending Westdale Secondary School. Uh, we also talked about the um, revised French Immersion Directive. Uh, we have a new voting member from the rural schools. Uh, and then Superintendent Figaro, um, Figueredo, my apologies, <laughs> he uh, um, presented on the Transforming Learning Everywhere vision, which was, I think, they were uh, very interested in um, talking about the um, handing out the iPads and, and, uh, and how Transforming Learning Everywhere was going to uh, 
going to benefit our schools. Um, there were some um, concerns raised at that meeting uh, in regards to the younger children getting the iPads and having access to uh, inappropriate content and excessive screen time, which I think were well addressed by, um, by, by Superintendent Figueredo. And then we talked about uh, terms of reference. Uh, which was fairly straightforward. And then we also talked about uh, the monitoring item was the Guy Brown accommodation issue. And it was um, uh, basically Guy Brown, we are over capacity and uh, French immersion, we're sort of swelling um, at that school. So we were looking at di uh, different options in the Flamborough area for to address French immersion and to address the overcrowding um, so that's sort of an ongoing monitoring item. And uh, I believe, uh, I guess through, through, uh, through the chair to Mr. Figure or Superintendent Figueroa, if there's anything else that I've missed. Superintendent, any? is there anything further to add? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, just item F, which is just the, uh, on the end of the report, which is placed on the last page, just the ongoing <laughs> updates that are, that are the standard items on the FIAC agenda. All right. So I think you captured all of it. Thank you, Trustee Deep. Um, are you moving the report to receive it? Yes. There are no action items. So yes, I move that it Perfect. be received. Very good. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Trustee Patterson. Thank you very much. Any questions, comments on the report? Trustee Hicks. <clears throat> Thank you. Through the chair, with the transportation for extracurricular activities, I wonder if you could define that. I would imagine that would be for athletics as well as drama, plays, and so forth, uh, through you to the superintendent? Sure. Uh, superintendent Figurito. Through the chair, at the previous FIAC, or the very first FIAC meeting this school year, uh, the French Immersion Advisory Committee asked um, if, there were, um, if there was transportation you know, late runs for schools as a result of potentially Guy Brown students who may want to go to Westdale as their FI program. So the, as a follow-up, I brought back to FIAC examples of where there have been late runs for extracurricular activities for students. And did discuss where some schools, because of low ridership, also the, extra, the late runs were also removed. But it was to answer the trustee's question in response to uh, extracurricular activities, including athletics and, and other clubs. Because we're going to end up with uh, 13 schools uh, once the other schools are closed, and that I was just wondering through you to the superintendent, would it be wise to develop a specific policy for this type of thing, extracurricular activities on the sport? I, I'm, I'm assuming now that we do, do not have a, a policy, but it's... Uh, the last sentence, it says, by review by the superintendent in each case. So through you to the superintendent. Thank you, Executive Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Currently, our policy and directive doesn't, um, doesn't speak to these kind of requests. So it, at the direction of the, of the policy committee if, or the board of trustees, if that's a desire, it can be included. But currently, it's not. Um, so the update you're seeing is currently how it's being dealt with case by case. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Hicks. Further questions? Seeing none, we have a mover and seconder. All those in favor of receiving the report? And Don? Sorry, I have a question. I was on mute. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, so we, we had a motion to move it. We'll, we'll hold back on the vote then. Do you, you go ahead with your question. I just noted that um, concerns were raised about the potential rollout or the expected rollout of iPads for grade four and five students coming up. And I've had a number of concerns from parents coming forward from Wood 7 as well about the way we are planning to roll out iPads next year. While I do recognize the importance of technology in the classroom as a valuable teaching and learning tool, I was wondering if um, I can make a motion to engage in a parent consultation on that rollout of technology for grades for students in the fall of 2015. Thank you. So, so just so I understand correctly, you're hoping to make a motion in terms of a consultation or, or in order to that consult? That would be the pro appropriate way to do it, to make a motion that we can consult with parents or consult with parents um, on the rollout of iPads for September 20, 
15. If I can make that as a request, that would be fine. Yeah, yeah. So just, just in terms of process, the, the only thing I'm struggling with is, is usually during any type of trustee report, that's an item on our agenda. This is, an, this is the agenda from an advisory committee. Um, so this is their agenda. So we could pass one of their motions, but we can't necessarily make a motion on one of their items. Um, but that being said, I mean, I don't want to get stuck in the weeds, but what I'd like to do, if perhaps we could get a comment on the uh, Transforming Learning Everywhere plan and, and some of uh, the consultations moving forward, maybe there's some information that trustees can learn. Um, so I'm not sure who will take that, but perhaps uh, Executive Superintendent Figueroa. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. We'll be back in front of the Board of Trustees in May um, as part of, a, part of the program committee and then the board regarding an update. Uh, it was um, the direction of the previous board after last year's 21st Century Learning Report, now we're calling TLE, that we would be back in front of the Board of Trustees in spring with an update. And part of that update is to give some feedback uh, in terms of how the pilots have been going. And yes, our entry point has been grade four um, for our TLE in terms of the iPads in the one-on-one environment and having students take it home. But we have been communicating, consulting in parent sessions. Um, Superintendent Joshua and his seven North schools has had parent sessions and part of the focus group in EBES is doing focus groups with staff, parent, parent sessions as well to gather some questions around the TLE and part of that is around reviewing potentially with the entry point for that one-to-one. -one. So we will be back in front of trustees in, in May and we are doing some of that consultation in our, in our pilots um, as we're implementing year one. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Executive Superintendent. So uh, checking in with uh, uh, Trustee Danko, does that, does that answer your question or is that something that, that we could uh, leave with staff to help develop or did you have something else in mind? Uh, that does answer my question. We are doing some consultation. Um, it is with the pilot schools who are currently already experiencing some form of a rollout. Um, I would love to see that on a broader basis, but if that is more appropriate to discuss at another time, that's fine with me. Okay, so so I think we've captured that feedback. I think uh, I super, you can't see him, but Superintendent Figueredo is nodding profusely. So it looks like there's some type of... Uh, Acknowledgement there, so we'll take that offline, and uh, after the meeting, I'm sure uh, he'll follow up with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Uh, next question, Trustee Deeds. Uh, through the chair, just in uh, sort of an update to that, is um, at the French Immersion um, uh, Committee, is some of the questions that were raised and answered by Superintendent Figueredo were, I think, some of the same questions that I've seen come up at parent councils around the, the um, iPads. And I think from listening at the French Immersion uh, Committee, what I, what I learned was I think there's a lot of um, answers to those questions. Maybe we would just need to sort of get those um, answers out to trustees and to parents as to how we're dealing with some of the concerns because it's my understanding now being at that committee that those concerns are being addressed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's noted. Very good. Uh, any other questions or comments from trustees? Seeing none, so we have the motion moved by Trustee D, seconded by, I believe, Trustee Patterson. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. That is unanimous. Moving to item number seven, our Special Education Advisory Committee report from January 28th. I believe uh, Trustee Patterson is going to bring that. Trustee Patterson. Thank you, Chair White. Um, so at our February, or sorry, at our uh, January 28th meeting, um, we elected our chair, um, who will be, uh, uh, what's your first name? Judy, right? Judy Contino. Um, and we uh, moved to uh, defer the uh, vote for the vice chair until the next meeting because uh, the person that they felt um, would take the position was not in attendance. Um, we had uh, staff presentations. We heard uh, from, super in, or from Superintendent Stacy Zucker about the board budget priorities. Um, and Michelle Rosenberg also did a, a great presentation on mental health and well-being um, on the collaborative problem solving. Um, and I think we've, uh, we've asked to have that presented to us as well. So I'm looking forward to everybody having a chance to see Michelle's uh, presentation. Um, there's a list there of the, uh, the membership for 2000, 2000 2014-2018 term, 
and there's actually one available spot, and uh, we are going to actively um, look into the community to find uh, to fill that vacancy. Um, there was uh, some correspondence, a couple of applicants for those uh, um, empty seats, um, but the uh, the committee didn't feel that they would met the requirements. Uh, they were from the Epilepsy Halton Peel Hamilton and uh, FAS World. And the following agenda items were deferred to the next meeting on February 25th. The survey results for SEAC professional development, uh, values to engage by and how we honor these values, and a tabled letter from Durham Catholic School Board, are mandatory special education uh, qualifications. Um, and, and there was another um, item mentioned uh, um, for you, uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, Shelley Woon. Uh, we talked about the uh, report on Mountain, and I have talked to Pam Reinhold, and uh, she will get us a, a update of that uh, for the, uh, the public to, to view. So. Thank you very much. Is that, is, is that the end, or did I just cut you off? And that is the end. No, that's oh, the end. Thank there you. you go. And you're moving the report? I am, yes. Thank, thank you very much. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Bingham, thank you very much. Any questions or comments on the SEAC report? Trustee Van Geffen. Uh, through the chair, uh, SEAC uh, actively. SEAC uh, actively pursuing uh, to fill the uh, the the vacancy. I, I'm just curious as to what what process is involved in that. Thank you very much. Do you have the information, from Trustee Patterson, or would you like me to refer to uh, Superintendent Woon? Super Superintendent. Through the chair, what we're first doing is reviewing the membership that has um, been present in the past. So there's quite a number of agencies. We're looking all the way back to 1998 that were represented at one time and looking um, whether any of those agencies would like to participate, but also um, consulting some of our uh, special education service department staff around who are community partners that are actively involved in their work that we might um, seek interest uh, for representation from. Thank you. Further questions? Further questions? Seeing none. All those in favor of the report or receiving the report? That is unanimous. Aye. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll skip down to item number eight, which is our oral reports from liaison committees. So this is a, once again an opportunity for our five liaisons to internal uh, organizations to just give a brief uh, report, if necessary, of the workings of those groups. Uh, so I will begin uh, just in terms of the city school board um, liaison committee. Um, there is no further update as to what we reported a couple of weeks ago. Uh, currently, we're in the process of scheduling a uh, meeting, hopefully sooner rather than later, with the city of Hamilton. And right now, it's in the clerk's office. So we're just awaiting some calendar dates. Uh, any questions on, on the city school board liaison committee? See none. We'll skip down to the Hamilton Wentworth Home and School Association. Um, I am also the rep for uh, Home and School. They are meeting. The only item that they asked me to highlight was their upcoming conference, which all trustees should get a uh, invite to in the next couple of weeks. So do expect that. Uh, any questions, comments on the Home and School Association? See none. And we'll jump down to the HWDSB Foundation. Um, both Don and I are the representatives to uh, the foundation. Just in terms of any information to provide, uh, the next meeting is actually this Wednesday, February 11th. So since our last board meetings, uh, the group has not met. So we'll have an update at the next board meeting. Um, but we do happen to have a man with how many votes on the committee? Two, three? <laughs> The chair of the committee. Just uh, uh, a reminder, this is our annual general meeting as per um, uh, regulation as well. Uh, because we're a, a not-for-profit charitable organization, um, we need to report to the public on an annual basis within six months of the closing of the books. And so that will occur um, prior to the um, foundation meeting will be an annual general meeting that will be open to the public. 
And, and Wayne uh, Jodry is the chair of the foundation. So that was a dual role that he's carrying right now as our interim director, um, but he's also the, the chair of the foundation. Okay, any questions on the HWDSB foundation? Seeing none, we'll go down to the OPSPA report. I'll go to Trustee Johnstone. Thank you, through the chair. Um, OPSPA held a public education symposium on January 29th to 31st. Uh, 340 trustees attended, including seven trustees from HWDSB. Um, the PES included uh, um, a presentation by the, um, by the Minister of Education, as well as workshops on governance and uh, board structure. Um, there will be a regional meeting uh, for OPSPA held here at HWDSB on April 11th, so I encourage all of our trustees to be there and to mark your calendars. Further information will be coming out, but again, that's April 11th for a regional meeting here. Um, the policy work team meets on Wednesday, April 11th. Um, I am the alternate uh, for um, the um, policy work team for OPSPA and is um, one of our representatives will be in Panama. I will be filling in for that meeting on the 11th. Um, there is a labor relations and human resources symposium taking place March 26th to 28th. Trustees that are part of the HR committee are encouraged to attend. There is also a call for nominations for OPSPA awards program. You can find more information on the OPSPA website, but those nominations are due April 10th. Um, since my last report, there has been no further legislative or finance or policy or program updates. Our next board of directors is taking place February 20th to 21st. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Johnstone. Any questions for Alex, our OPSPA director? None, thank you very much. And lastly, we'll go to our umbrella board of family and child care centers. Uh, we'll look for an update, I believe, from Trustee Archer. Thank you. Um, we had our meeting, and uh, it was an information meeting that uh, Christine and I attended. And uh, then we got to meet on site at Lincoln Alexander. It was a, a nice meeting to meet everybody and inf lots of information. Um, nothing really much to report, is there, at this time? Not, no, we're just learning. <laughs> I'm just looking at Christine, making sure I didn't forget anything. Our next meeting is February 25th, so hopefully we'll have some information to bring back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that is the end of our oral reports. Trustee Hicks? Question on, on, on process. I was just wondering, some of these uh, reports from the liaison committee, they, they will have action items, and there will be things that uh, the committee will um, decide on. And I'll give you an example would be the first one, the City School Board Liaison Committee. So my question through the chair would be, uh, will we get a lay down or will we get the, will other trustees get information on what happened at those meetings and the direction that has happened? Yes. So how, are we, how are we handling that versus these uh, oral reports? So in terms of the information that comes from these committees, so these aren't committees of the board, they're, ex they're external committees. Um, so it's up to um, our reps and, and the chair of the board to funnel how we receive that information. So it would not be through one of these verbal reports. It would likely go through one of our committees or if it doesn't belong at a particular committee, directly at our board or standing committee. Um, so it will be funneled not through this mechanism but through uh, the appropriate channel. So again, taking the city school board liaison committee, it would be the same type of information. Would so, so the same information would filter to us, absolutely, but it wouldn't come uh, at this stage. It would probably come either through governance in most cases or through finance and facilities if it's an accommodation concern or it may come directly to standing committee or board. Absolutely. Yep. Further questions? See none at this point. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion Trustee Deeth. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Archer, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. That is unanimous. So don't go anywhere. I would usually say take a two-minute break, but I think we're ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to turn it over to Trustee Johnstone, and we'll begin in a moment our standing committee meeting.
Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order uh, the Standing Committee meeting for Monday, February 9th, 2015. Um, can I get approval of the agenda? Uh, Trustee Archer, seconder. Trustee Van Geffen. Um, do, is there any declaration of conflict of interest? Seeing none. And, oh, I do have to go back. We forgot to, I forgot to call a vote on the agenda. So all those in favor of the agenda, please raise your hands. And Aye. Thank you, that's unanimous. Uh, and please note that uh, Trustee uh, Maholland is out of the room. Uh, so there is no conflict of interest, so moving along, uh, we'll start with item number four, 2015-2016 draft school year calendar. I'd like to go to the director. I'm going to hand off to um, Superintendent Sovereign, who's done the work in that area. Superintendent Sovereign. Great. Thank you. And through the chair, I'd just uh, like to draw your attention to the report um, and the uh, action item before you in regards to the 2015-16 school year calendar uh, to um, go out for a public consultation. Um, regulation 304 requires that uh, draft calendars um, be put out for public consultation and it is the uh, practice of this board to have um, consulted with the public for a 30-day period and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Right. Just a reminder that we do have a recommended action to approve the school year calendar um, but uh, for public consultation so um, um, if we'd like to hold on to that and open the floor up to questions first, I would entertain any questions or discussion. Trustee Deeth. Uh, through the chair to uh, Superintendent Sovereign, I just wondered what um, kind of response that we normally get from parents um, when we consult. Do we, do we normally get a good uh, a number of parents answering the survey or getting feedback from them? Is it, is it generally fairly good? Um, through the chair, and thank you for the question. Um, last year's uh, results, and actually the last uh, few years' results, were there were uh, a few hundred uh, parents who responded to the survey. Does that answer your question? Yep. Okay. Are there any further comments or questions? Uh, student trustee Tobias Murray. Um, through the chair, uh, I just have a question about, so I'm wondering if just drawing attention to uh, exam week for first semester, um, what the possibility is of having a day, I guess it would be uh, the Tuesday, assuming that regular exams start on Wednesday for most schools uh, first semester. I'm wondering what the possibility is of having a day uh, before exams for students to be able to take time to study, assuming that uh, the week before exams uh, happen, we have many culminating and test wrapping up courses. It's a really stressful time for students, and I'm wondering what the possibility is of having a day where students would be able to study before their first exam. Thank you. I will go to the superintendent. Great, thank you, and through the chair, and thank you for the question. It's a really good one. Um, the school year calendar um, committee uh, would not necessarily look at um, the days prior to the exam days and what those might look like, but uh, we could certainly take, back, uh, take that back to executive council for, uh, for further discussion. Thank you. Is there any further questions or comment? Uh, Trustee Beep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to the superintendent. Just a question um, as far as process goes, and, and, I, and it's really just for my own information. If uh, an instructional day or two were lost during the calendar year due to closure, uh, snow day, something like that, um, what happens? Uh, how do we make those up after the fact, especially with it being so tight right to the end of June, just uh, for my own curiosity? And uh, through the chair, so the, um, the regulation uh, requires that there be 194 
uh, school days, uh, which include uh, instructional days and professional activity days, uh, between September 1st and uh, June the 30th. Um, it would really be up to the uh, to the board and the will of the board if they wanted to uh, extend any of those days um, beyond that. In terms of this calendar and approving a calendar moving forward, uh, we're really looking at uh, just those 194 days between those uh, uh, start and end dates. And I'm just going to um, go to the director for further comment. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I think the underlying question here may be uh, how do we pay for these days if, we've, if they're lost? And we live in um, southern Ontario, but Ontario, and it's a fact from year to year there will be snow days and, and students will miss some instruction. There's no expectation of the ministry that that get made up. Um, we uh, mark them as G-Day grant days and will receive full funding based upon the uh, two times of the year when um, registration or, or um, enrollment gets calculated. So it will have no impact on our budget as a board. I do know there are some uh, jurisdictions in uh, more northerly areas where they're off more, and they have from time to time considered um, inserting a day or two um, or uh, dispensing with a PA day. But in our circumstance, our track record here, one or two days a year, it's probably not worthy of consideration. Does that answer your question, Trustee Beatty? It does, thank you. Trustee Hicks? Uh, thank you. Through the chair, we do consult with our Cryptomas board. I'm just wondering, uh, are there any glaring differences, especially PD days? Trustee Hicks, so, sorry, can you speak directly into the microphone so that Trustee Danko can hear you? We consult with uh, the uh, Catholic School Board, and I was just wondering, uh, is there any glaring uh, differences, especially in the PD days and so forth? Could you give me a, a review of what, where they're coming from? Thank you. And through the chair, I will uh, actually direct you to a page in the report where we, um, to the page three of the report, uh, where we've outlined the proposed uh, professional activity days, both for uh, our board um, and uh, those that are the coterminous Catholic board is proposing. And for 2015-16, it would be identical to 2014-15 uh, in that we overlap with a number of the, uh, the PA days. And so we, uh, we do go back and forth um, uh, to ensure that we can align as many days as possible. Thank you. Is there any further questions or comments? Seeing none, I'm looking for... Oh, sorry, I did have a question. I had to unmute myself. Jesse Danko? Uh, I had just, I think, two questions, and I think some of them have been answered. So we can have a PD day before Labor Day, which is being proposed, as long as it's between September 1st and June 30th. And so my question through the chair about that is, um, I mean, have we already consulted, and it looks like we have, but just to clarify, have we already consulted with the teachers and the principals to determine the September 2nd start date as opposed to September the 4th, which is the alternate start date for EAs or the optional start date for EAs? I'm going to go through to the superintendent. Uh, thank you for the question. And through the chair, um, within the report, uh, we've noted as well the, uh, the committee, the advisory committee, um, that has uh, been um, working on the, uh, the draft calendars and uh, they include representation from uh, all the various uh, employee groups, uh, teachers, uh, principals, vice principals, educational assistants, uh, and others. And so uh, the recommendation of that uh, committee to executive council was to uh, consider the uh, Wednesday to be the noted professional activity day uh, with the exception of uh, two employee groups um, who have uh, requested that uh, their first uh, day of work uh, be the, uh, the Friday. Uh, and this was for um, uh, financial considerations uh, for those two particular employee groups. Uh, and to give you some context in the past when there uh, has had to be a day prior to Labor Day, uh, this was the practice of this board as well. Thank you, Superintendent. Trustee Danko, you had one further question? Uh, sort of a comment and a question, if you don't mind. 
Um, I wanted to note that I, we have a minimum and a maximum number of professional activity days, and I was really pleased to see that we have chosen to use the maximum number of days, which is six, as we recognize the importance of teacher support and development. Um, and I also wanted to echo the, the comment or the question from student trustee Tobias Murray about the potential to put one of the professional days between terms before exams and one afterwards, as I recall being a student and how stressful that might be. Um, my, my last question was about the focus of the, the professional development. So I noted on 4-8 it says that the PA day focus is determined by um, Executive Council as directed by the Ministry of Education. Do we have any flexibility in adding to our professional development day focuses? Um, I don't see anything here about um, sort of support for technology use in the classroom, which obviously is a focus for our board, and I was just wondering if, if that is included there somewhere. Thank you, Trustee. I will go through to the Superintendent. Thank you, and through the chair, um, the professional activity days that uh, we put forward uh, to the Ministry of Education uh, are fairly broad categories, uh, as you will see. Uh, there are certainly directions from the ministry around uh, student achievement and well-being, um, being a uh, very strong focus of those days. Uh, but in terms of uh, the specifics, uh, we certainly include uh, our transforming learning everywhere as the umbrella of the uh, the days and the focus of the days. Thank you. Trustee Danko, does that answer your questions? Yes, thank you very much. Trustee Deeth? I just wanted to ask for the chair to uh, Superintendent Sovereign, um, in regards to new grade 9 students transitioning, I know in the past, and I'm not sure if it's been at every school or just at certain schools, where the students, grade 9 students, come in earlier, come in um, the week before. Is that um, something that is just determined by the school, or is that sort of uh, set as part of the, the calendar that the, the grade 9 students come in earlier? Um, so I will go to the superintendent, and I'll just remind trustees as well to have your comments prepared beforehand, as our new governance rules, we are only supposed to speak once. So... But, uh, but we certainly will entertain this question. Superintendent. Great, thank you. And, uh, and through the chair, so in terms of the uh, school year calendar, um, all that we would determine is uh, where the professional activity days would be, uh, when the start and end dates are, when the examination days would be set. Uh, in terms of practices that would occur uh, at each one of the secondary schools for transition, that would be a local decision. Thank you. Is there any other uh, questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, can I please get a, mo um, a motion um, for the recommended action that the draft 2015-2016 school year calendars be approved for public consultation? Uh, Trustee White, seconder. Trustee Archer. Um, we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. That is unanimous. Um, so we'll now go to item number five. I ask, I'm going to pass the chair um, over to Trustee and Chair White for this portion as it relates directly to my ward. Thank you very much. We are in item number five of the report. This is the naming of the combined Mount Hope and Bellstone Elementary Schools. And bringing this uh, report, um, I will go to the ward trustee uh, as she catches up in the package. I'll turn it over to Trustee Johnstone. Thank you. Um, so the naming of the school committee met. Um, when did we meet? We met. Yes, in January. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So the naming of the school committee met in January. Um, the committee does uh, put forward three names, as is required under board policy. Uh, the three names that the committee put forward was Lancaster Elementary School, Lancaster Elementary School, and Mount Hope Elementary School. Um, and uh, the order that they were ranked in was Mount Hope number one, Lancaster number two, and uh, Lancaster is a third option. Or Glam sorry, Glamford is our is our third um, option. Um, 
trust, I guess the, the committee members rank them as such and they um, do, um, I will be, for, be putting forward a motion, um, in a, I guess in a moment, um, to make Mount Hope Elementary School uh, the official name. Um, when the committee considered the different options, um, Mount Hope was put forward mainly because uh, the committee, when they go home at night, they consider themselves going home to Mount Hope rather than Glanford. Uh, Glanford is, uh, is a geographical location, um, but it's important to note that Mount Hope El um, has been the name of the area officially and unofficially for um, many, many years. Um, Lancaster Elementary was another name that uh, the committee discussed. Um, well, certainly the Lancaster has uh, many connotations to the area, certainly with the museum being right across the street. Um, it was felt that um, uh, that the Lancaster was used as um, uh, in the last, I guess, World War, and um, that we would prefer to have um, uh, to not use uh, a war machine as the name of a school. Um, and uh, with that, um, I also want to highlight the or echo the words of our students uh, who participated in it, um, that uh, students feel that they have a strong connection to uh, the name Mount Hope, um, that many students who attend the school, their parents and grandparents attended uh, Mount Hope Elementary, and it has always been called as such. Um, the school has actually had uh, two prior schools amalgamate into it, and each time it has maintained the name Mount Hope Elementary, and uh, it is the naming of the school committee's hope that we would retain that name. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I heard a motion, so I just want to double check. So you're moving uh, what, Trustee Johnson? So um, I would like to move that, uh, um, that the school be called Mount Hope Elementary School. Thank you very much. We have a mover. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Pattison, thank you. Comments? I'll go. Uh, Trustee Johnson, do you have anything further to add? Perfect. Thank you. We'll go to the seconder, Trustee Pattison. Thank you very much, Jay White. Um, this school has a lot of uh, history for me. I, I have longtime friends and a former teacher who both lived on Unity, so I spent a lot of time on that playground. I didn't know the history of Mount Hope itself until I read this report, and uh, and uh, it certainly makes it more fitting that we continue the name. And uh, it is a great community. It's certainly grown a lot since I played on those playgrounds when I was a kid. But uh, um, I'm certainly in support of this, continuing this tradition of this name. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Deeth. Oh, OK. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Beatty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My question, uh, I guess, would be to uh, Trustee Johnstone uh, with regards to the process. Um, I'm wondering what, if any, engagement was made to our partners at the City of Hamilton, um, given that it does impact the community at large uh, and that we are working hard to try to improve communication with them if there was any uh, outreach or engagement on that part. Thank you. Trustee Johnstone. So I would like to, um, to highlight that the chair, um, trustee, or chair White actually made a direct phone call to the ward councillor, uh, Brenda Johnson, to inform her about, um, um, about the naming of the school survey and uh, invited participation on that end. Um, but perhaps we could go to the director just to highlight um, the, the wider process in terms of public engagement. Thank you, Mr. Director. I'm going to have to hand that off to somebody who knows. I'm just wondering, um, do we want to go to Superintendent Dunlop, or we could answer it from a policy perspective. Uh, Superintendent Dunlop, do you, do you know the communication portion of this, or would you like me to provide a... We'll go to Superintendent Dunlop first. Thank you, Chair. Um, I can speak in broad strokes in terms of the policy, and I think... Um, Jackie Penman, our manager of corporate communications, is also heading towards the uh, microphone to give some added information. But there is a public consultation process through a survey um, that is on the website and can also be mailed in, I think, for a period of 45 days. But I could be wrong. If, if so, uh, Ms. Penman will correct me. Okay. Thank you. We'll go to the manager of communications. Um, through, you, Mr. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, we also do, uh, do a media release. We um, do flyers that go out to the entire school community. We also take an ad out in the local paper to ensure that um, our community is aware of the naming process. We do, uh, as part of the co consultation process, there is about um, 
50 or 60 groups that are on that distribution list to ensure that it is widely distributed um, when we go through a school renaming process. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have a follow-up question, Trustee Beatty? I'm wondering, I, I did read through the, the policy and, and I noted that there didn't seem to be any specific reference to engagement as far as the city goes. And it's not always appropriate, but in some cases it is. And I'm just wondering if maybe that's something that could be reviewed at policy committee uh, in an upcoming meeting uh, for a little more inclusion and engagement on, on our part as we try to nurture that relationship. Yeah, thank you very much, Trustee Beatty. I think that's a good suggestion. I think in terms of our template, we do have a group uh, a, a template for all the organizations we do consult and uh, I'm not sure and if our manager of corporate communication knows but if uh, counselors are on our default consultation list they appear to be so I, so in that case they would be on the email list so each counselor um, in the city of Hamilton would receive an email any consultation we do um, but once again it is wise to to follow up for instance so that's something we can take back okay. thank you trustee Beatty do we have any further questions or discussion. Yes, trustee, student trustee Tobias Murray. Uh, through the chair, I'm just looking for clarification on um, then. So the naming, the list of names of who sits on the naming advisory committee uh, states that there were students from Mount Hope uh, who were part of this committee. But I'm wondering uh, if there was an opportunity for students from Bellstone to be part of this committee committee or to offer their opinion on what the name of the new school should be. Thank you. Trustee Johnston? Um, I will I will go over, um, defer this over to the superintendent, but I do want to highlight that Bellstone um, is now rolled into Mount Hope. Thank you. That's it. Yep, that's the answer. So they are, they are Mount Hope students, soon to be renamed, potentially Mount Hope. Um, further, further questions. Trustee Hicks. I will be supporting the motion, but I have uh, two questions on process. It says the uh, renaming of a school may occur. I wonder who starts the process. Um, is it the community that are concerned when we combine two schools? It's, is it the board that starts the process? Uh, because we've, we've run into this situation in Westdale where I think it was the community that drove the process. So I'm interested to find out who drove this process. Thank you. We'll go to uh, the superintendent to the uh, policy committee, uh, Executive Superintendent Figueroa. Through the chair to uh, Trustee Hicks' question. Uh, under the policy, it does indicate action required that the naming or renaming of a school um, under the following circumstance, following a board approved accommodation decision, uh, which in this case, Bellstone is closed, um, or recommendation of the Board of Trustees. It also can be triggered um, a recommendation from a, su a superintendent or a board of trustees outside of an ARC process if there's a you know, consultation with the community or there's something that might emerge from the local level. But in this case, it is a result of uh, <coughs> triggered by an accommodation review. And it's a shall. Is that correct, superintendent? It says it shall in capital letters. In capital letters. Yes. There you go, trustee Hicks. Your mic, your mic. George R. Allen, and there were some recommendations if we kept the, the, the name that we would identify something in the school about the other school. And I was wondering if there's any, anything that uh, we might want to recognize Bellstone, uh, whether we do it by the library or we have a presentation that the students can see coming into Mount Hope that would remind them that some of the students are from Bellstone. I wonder if we're going to go in that direction. Thank you. Trustee Johnson. Thank you. Um, so the naming of the school committee did uh, discuss that. Um, the, uh, naming of the different portions of the school was not the mandate of the committee. Um, so school council, it was going to be directed to school council to initiate the conversation there about uh, potentially naming the library off after Bellstone. Thank you very much. Uh, further questions, comment, or debate? See none. We do have a motion uh, from Trustee Johnstone, seconded by Trustee Pattison, uh, to I guess retain the name Mount Hope Elementary School following the accommodation decision. All those in favor? Aye. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. I'll turn the chair over to the chair of the standing committee uh, for adjournment. 
One last major important item on the agenda tonight. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Trustee Hicks, seconder. Trustee Bingham, all those in favor? Aye. Thank you. That is unanimous. Thanks, Don. I'm going to hang up, okay? Thanks a lot, Heather. Thank you.